Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here as always. Thank you for watching. And today we're going to be talking about a, uh, a recurring topic that I have been asked about by you folks many a time. And that is, uh, we in the gun industry have a certain code of ethics that we expect the manufacturers that work here adhere to. And I could speak it for an hour on what that code of ethics says, but basically, if you violate the code of ethics, you are a trader brand, and it's very easy to identify them. You know it when you see it, right? Like a, a, a Springfield Armory, Rock River Arms, uh, a Liberty Safe, right? Like they just jump right at you, a Team Wendy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know them when you see them. The question is, how is it possible to achieve redemption and save your company after having made a major misstep like one of these companies? Is it just donezo? Do you, should you just pack up and, and throw in the towel? Or do you have an opportunity to salvage your company and move on and do great things? And the answer is yes, you do. Um, and today, I'm going to give you my playbook for how you can accomplish that. Fair warning, you're not going to like it. Capitalism break time. Today's video is brought to you by Mission First Tactical. Many of you out there will recognize this brand as a producer of accessories that you use on a regular basis. However, new for 2024, they have a line of drinkware items that are mocked up to look like certain things. Not only do some of them look like boomy things, but they also have accredited military gear. I have a full video on their acro packs that we covered late last year, and now this pack is available in Dirty Hippie Green. So whether you're looking for a concealed carry backpack or you just want something that can hold some armor plates, this thing has got you covered without giving off a whole lot of tactical vibes. I'll have a discount code listed in the pinned comment down below and also over the affiliates page, so if you're interested in anything from Mission First Tactical, then you can use my code and get 20% off. I have friends that have worked at some companies that have made some bad decisions. And I've heard them whine and complain how the, the gun community is a very unforgiving place and you don't really get a second chance if you screw up at, at the real level and all that sort of stuff. And I say, uh, no, that's not how it works. We've seen these redemption arcs play out in the gun community before. Uh, and I think the most prolific one to point to, the easiest one to point out would be Ruger. Bill Ruger was a grade A fud-tastical boot-licking trader that stood in the way of the progress and capabilities of his organization. And Ruger got a reputation for kind of being fud guns. Since his death, they have fully redeemed themselves and have come out with some of the most popular tactical firearms available on the market today and i will raise my hand and say that i own like 10 ruger guns and i like them some of those guns bill ruger designed himself but because he had this mentality of obstructionism he will always be known as the dude that stood in the way if you can't receive forgiveness then how did ruger do it i mean i guess one of your options is just to wait like 50 years for everybody who remembers to just die. But if you're the marketing director of a company or you're re recently installed in a position of power in an organization that made a major mistake, well, that doesn't help you right now, right? Because if you're just going to wait for 50 years for somebody like me to kick the can, well, you're probably right there with me. So it didn't help you any, right? So how do you fix the problem right now? Pain. Step number one, and I don't know where along the way our society forgot how to do this, but you own the mistake, and then you apologize for it. You cannot apologize for something properly that you don't understand and have demonstrated that you understood the damage that you caused. 
right? You can't just apologize for something and not actually mean it. People are way too smart for that. They can figure out that you don't actually mean it and then you're, you're just doing damage control. So if you don't demonstrate that you fully understand what it is that you did wrong, then you can't apologize for it. And doubling down on it will not fix the situation. I will note that you have a finite window to do this. Take the blood light situation, right? They had an opportunity to fix it. They could have nipped it in the bud in a weekend, but <laughs> nipped it in the bud, <laughs> but they chose not to. They decided to double down on it. And to this day, the bar uptown in my town doesn't even carry Bud Light anymore. That was last summer. It's January. Step number two, publicly fire every single person that is even remotely connected to the decision in question. So uh, if you're a CEO and you make a bad call, like uh, Marty Daniels should have stepped down a long time ago after the first, uh, I don't even know how he got a mulligan, but he did, uh, should have stepped down after at least the second time that he opened his mouth and inserted his foot, right? You have to demonstrate immediately after having made a bad decision that, hey, there was a bad decision made, the bad call is not representative of what the company stands for and what they intend to do going forward. And because of that, the people that were responsible for the decision that clearly did not get the whole picture are no longer with the company, right? So you've separated the cancer from the rest of the body, I guess, not only to save your company, but also to demonstrate that, hey, these we clearly messed up in hiring these people. They're not what we stand for. That can be pretty painful, particularly if the call was like one of the owner's call or something like that. There have been some of those in the books. In that case, um, that owner steps down from a leadership role and they hire a general manager. Sorry. Principal before profit, bro. It's really not that hard. Step number three, leverage everything that you have. Any war chest that you have, any really good engineers that you have, any intellectual property that you have to come up with the best idea that you can execute in the next couple months. Bring something to market that demonstrates to your consumer base that you are an integral part of the market, you have a role to play in that market and in the, their future. In other words, come out with something really fucking cool like yesterday. Step number four, once you've come out with that thing and you have confirmed that it is indeed cool and that it doesn't have any major problems, like if you launch a product and then you know, you have to issue a major recall of the thing like a month down the road or something like that, then you're dead. You're screwed. You're done. Once you've figured all that out, you take every spare dollar diamond cent that you have access to and you spend it on marketing that product. Market that product like your company's future depends on it. Because if you screwed up that bad, then it likely does. It might not kill you today. It might not kill you tomorrow, a month from now, maybe even a year from now, but you've depleted some of your goodwill with the people. And depending on your market share, that's just going to bleed you over time. You got to get out ahead of that. I don't care who you have to buy off, how much money you have to pay to whoever, whatever social media person, whatever magazine, whatever th trade shows you got to go to, spend it because you're going to need all the goodwill that you can buy because there's some of it that you can't. Now, everything that I just covered basically goes to... Every company everywhere that screws something up major with their consumer base. But now, specifically in the gun industry, find a fight somewhere and get engaged in it. Make sure that it's not some other toxic organization like the National Rifle Association, right? But pick an FPC or GOA or something like that and ask them. Call them up and be like, look... Just be frank with them. We need to demonstrate that we have Second Amendment principles. We screwed something up, and um, clearly everybody thinks that we're sellouts. We need to demonstrate that we're putting our money where our mouth is, and they should continue to give us the money to be able to do that sort of thing, right? That sounds terrible, 
You should have been doing it from the get-go so that that base was already built, but now you really just don't have a choice, and this is going to sound even grosser. You better make sure that everybody sees you do it. So you better hire somebody who's got some really, really good PR prowess, who's very, very well connected, and it's going to cost you a lot of money. (laughs) I mean, I haven't seen uh, a Rock River Arms involved in any of the pistol brace litigation, although at this juncture it's probably too little too late for that outfit. I think they were going with the 50-year model that I discussed previously. But anyway... Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. This is what I would tell somebody if I was put in charge of resurrecting their company out of a major snafu that a predecessor just was axed for, right? This is how I would go about it. And now I need to go take a shower because I feel gross for doing this one.